Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight here on Gay Mass. Just a little reminder there, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to uh, the show, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight here on Gay Mass. Tonight I'm doing, obviously, a Gay Mass show uh, where we talk about all things gay, all things um, gay news, gay whatever. So if it's gay related, that's what we talk about on the show. If you listened to the show before, you know that, but I appreciate you listening. So, um, Lots of things, lots of things going on in the news these days or tonight. Anyway, there is um, today or yesterday specifically. It's Sunday right now. Yesterday was actually the fifteenth anniversary, fifteenth uh, year anniversary of uh, Matthew Shepard's murder. And uh, for those of you who don't know who Matthew Shepard was, it would be a travesty for you not to know who he was. Because he was um, just a regular guy, regular gay guy, you know, young in his twenties and trying to. He's twenty-one years old actually, and lived in. Um, he was from Colorado, but lived in Wyoming. <clears throat> pardon me, at the time, and he was um, in October nineteen ninety-eight. He was lured um, in from a bar in Laramie, Wyoming, um, by two men and. Uh, He was kidnapped, he was robbed, he was brutally beaten, tied to a fence, and left to die uh, in Wyoming on an open prairie, basically. And he was discovered 18 hours later, and for the next five days, um, he was in a coma in a hospital in Colorado, where he was from. And his family uh, and, and people who loved him and the world were watching because this was such a brutal murder. Or a brutal thing to happen. Um, one of the very first uh, public instances where people were actually um, aware of the brutality of gay bashing. And um, so that's why this was such a big deal at the time. And I remember when this happened and I felt so incredibly sad about it because uh, he did die. And um, he died, um, as I said, 18 hours later. and um, Or excuse me, five days later. And as a result of that death, he was um, sort of martyred in a way by the gay community to have been someone that was considered to be, um, you know, an example for uh, pushing forward new legislation for gay rights in the country. And, um, you know, it caused uh, the president at the time, Bill Clinton, to renew efforts to extend the federal hate hate crime legislation uh, to include LGBT individuals, women, uh, and people with disabilities. And um, after about a decade of wrangling in the Congress, um, a coalition of lawmakers passed the LGBT inclusive federal hate crimes bill in 2009. Um, and kind of stuck and snuck, snuck it in there as part of the National Defense Authorization Act in 2010. So it had to be snuck in what was the right thing to do to protect people, but it did actually happen finally. So fortunately, people were um, <clears throat> did the right thing to some degree. So nowadays, Matthew Shepard is seen as someone, um, you know, he's remembered because he was just a, he was a really sweet guy, apparently, by all accounts, and people who knew him loved him and whatever. So Hopefully, if you don't know who Matthew Separate is, you will know who he is now. And by the way, I want to say hi to David, the 5 by 5 in the chat room, Joss Peterson, and to Danny. Thank you guys for listening to the show. I appreciate it. If you guys want to call in, you're free to call in. Um, the call-in number is, hold on a second, what is the call-in number on my show? I don't even know um, because I use it so rarely anymore. It, the call-in number is area code 214-377-0481. Or you can always call in uh, for free using Skype, if you like, uh, to Off Limits Show on Skype, and I can um, hear you that way as well. So um, so what was I going to say? Oh, so yeah, so that's a little bit about Matthew Shepard, and um, I just wanted to mention his... Uh, his contribution, unfortunately, the way it had to happen to the gay community, um, but it is what it is. So uh, hopefully everybody knows who he was, and hopefully um, his life, did, you know, won't, obviously it didn't go down in vain because actually as a result of what he, his death and had happened, we had legislation, as I said, so that's good. So what else is going on in gay news? Uh, New Jersey Supreme Court agrees to hear a same-sex marriage case. The state's court 
on Friday agreed to hear a case on whether same-sex marriage should be legal in New Jersey and whether same-sex weddings can be performed while it decides. So stupid Governor Christie, which I call Governor Krispy Kreme, um, he... He's a, he's he's a conservative and is against legalizing same-sex marriage in New Jersey, but there's a big uh, big effort to push it forward in that state. The great thing is there are more and more states that are passing gay marriage, and it's just a matter of time, as I've said before in the show. So we're just waiting for things to actually um, happen. So uh, it says in the chat room, hey Josh, hey Danny, hello twenty-five, hey Danny. Are you on Facebook? Yes, private. Sorry. Don't add gays. Sorry. No offense. Uh, offense is not spelled with a C E F Y I, Danny. If you want to if you want to say something, you should probably say it. Um, um, you should probably learn your, your grammar a little better, obviously. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Christy is an idiot. I hate him too. And and the fact that people actually think he's actually remotely intelligent is just hilarious to me. I find him to be um, a remote I mean, a moron. But uh, anyway, so hopefully things will change in New Jersey. We'll see what happens there with uh, gay rights. Um, but it's just a matter of time. It's, you know, people, all they're doing is just delaying the inevitable. It's it's just going to happen anyway. There was a sad story also about um, there was a gay dad uh, who was mourning the loss of his son. Um, his name was uh, Joe Bell. And he was mourning the loss of his son, who his name, his son's name was 15 years old. His son's his son was 15 years old. His name was Jaden Bell, his son. Um, and he took his own life earlier this year um, after being bullied uh, incessantly for being gay. And his dad, uh, as a result of this, um, decided to do to start a uh, an organization um, in advocacy and sort of a, um, you know, getting the word out about, uh, bullying, um, people and, you know, fighting it in schools and in general, in general called Joe's walk for a change. And as a result of this, uh, he was doing a walk around the country <clears throat> and unfortunately he was hit by a car and, and died this last week. So, um, that's very sad, a very tragic uh, turn of events. Um, he was doing a really great thing and unfortunately died as a result of it. So that's too bad. Uh, anyway, um, oh, that's nice, Danny, but, um, I don't think, so I don't know if you're kidding or what your deal is, Danny. I don't know if you're being serious or what, but hopefully you were joking. So I'll assume you were joking if you're really a gay friendly person. Um, so what was I saying next? Uh, oh yeah. So that was a really sad turn of events for him as well. And it's great that, you know, people are doing, taking these horrible, tragic events that are happening to the kids out there these days, um, being bullied or whatever. And I just, I spoke about this last week or on last week's show or whatever, um, about a documentary I saw called Valentine road. I, and I saw it and it's really amazing and you should, you should check it out if you haven't seen it. And most people know about the story itself, but the story is if you don't know what the story of Valentine Road is, is um, is um, it's about okay. So nineteen in two thousand eight, there was this kid. If you saw his picture, you'd know what was his name. Let me go look at his name. I can't remember his name. Let's look it up. Uh, let's go find his name real quick. Um, oh yeah, his name was Larry King. That's right, because his name was the same as Larry King. Larry King, you know. So the guy's name was Larry King, and he was a, a uh, like 14 year old kid right and it was all over the news so I'm sure you guys if you saw his picture would recognize him but he was a biracial kid like half black half white or half black and half half Hispanic or something and um, so anyway he had actually um, he was very effeminate and whatever and he really was more, less gay than he was um, transgendered and, you know, he, he would dress like a girl and he would actually be, um, you know, kind of effeminate and that kind of thing. And he was 14 years old and he's in middle school. So as you know, especially if you're a boy in middle school, it's probably the hardest time in your life, whether you're straight or gay, because everybody is filled with complete insecurity and, you know, everybody's trying to fit in and, and belong. Well, anyway, so this kid stood out like a sore thumb. This kid had a really hard life. He had 
been um, abandoned by his family, his parents, when he was an infant or whatever, and left to the system, the foster system. And his foster parents that were taking care of him were abusing him, like physically, I mean. And it just so it had a horrible, horrible life. And so <clears throat> he was at school one day, or he'd be in school, and he had uh, this crush on this guy, this um, white guy who was very, um, he was a little older, maybe a year older or whatever, and um, good looking and, you know, kind of a jock or whatever. And so he actually um, went up to this guy on Valentine's Day. And at their school, they had this thing where they actually were um, talking about, you know, what they did was they took Valentines and up to people that you were attracted to or you liked or whatever. And so you would say, will you accept this heart from me? And so he took this and with his earrings and his high heels he was wearing and went up to this guy on the basketball court where he was surrounded by his friends. And he said this to him and the guy got really pissed off, of course. And um, so then about a week later, he's in his class with this guy and it's computer class. The guy pulls out a gun, shoots him in the back of the head in front of everybody else in the eighth grade or whatever, twice sits puts the gun down sits there and watches him bleed out to death okay and he shoots him because he says he's a faggot or whatever and he's a nigger or something like that and so um it turns out this guy was completely like a huge like aryan supreme supremacist or whatever you know like a white supremacist and was totally into like neo-nazism and hitler and all this shit and so the guy obviously murdered this guy. The teacher saw it. The, the students around him saw it. Everybody saw him do this, okay? And so what happens? What happens next? Well, the um, the actual guy runs out. The guy that shot the other guy runs out of the room. And um, the, the other guy's sitting there dying or whatever. They take him to the hospital. And he's there and he lives for about three or four days and then ends up dying. As a result of the wounds, the other guy gets charged with murder. So they go to trial. Okay, so they interview the people in the trial on 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 the jury. The people on the jury said this. This is what they said. They said to him. Um, they said to him. To the guy about the guy who shot the other boy, the straight guy who shot the gay boy, whatever. That oh, he didn't know what he was doing. It was gay panic. The guy didn't know. You know, he was, he's just scared and insecure. Oh, the poor guy just didn't know what he was doing at the time. He was out of his mind. You know, he doesn't deserve to die or go to prison, you know, nothing. And they want to let him go. And so the, the, the jury was actually divided seven to five, five people stating that this guy should actually be tried for murder, for first degree murder. And the other people, premeditated murder, the other seven jurors believe that he should be tried for manslaughter only. So they won and they tried him for manslaughter. He got 20 years in prison. And they interviewed these women after the fact, said, oh, the poor guy, just the poor kid didn't know what he was doing, blah, blah, blah. And so I was just, it's just completely, completely flabbergasting that people, simply because this excuse the murder of another human being who's gay, simply because the perpetrator actually, 